But uh, what, I'm trying, what I'm presenting today is uh, a very similar sort of event as what is going on here right now, and that is about. Uh, uh, basically about uh, making this sort of convergence event a more regular sort of event where people are able to do presentations like this and uh, share whatever sort of important and pertinent ideas are on their on their radar every day, as it were. Okay, so uh, background about me, I'm just from Calgary, <laughs> mostly. I studied philosophy for many, many years, four and a half years or so, and I didn't ever really get the capacity for critical thinking. It just didn't really sink in for me through uh, the academic philosophy. And then a little while ago, I came across uh, some internet researchers and uh, people who run their blogs and uh, podcasts and all that sort of thing, and talking about uh, these ideas, the trivium and the quadrivium here. And I found them very fascinating, and it has led me to be able to utilize critical thinking and apply it to everything in life. Um, so what I've been working on is uh, trying to get an idea of how, how to get people together and share these sort of ideas, and I called it uh, an occult forum, and uh, occult is typically a word that people are scared of. They, they think black magic and all this other sort of thing, but uh, it comes uh, from the Latin um, like oculus, where oculus is the eyeball, and oculare means like uh, hidden from sight. So the transliteration into English of occult is basically just hidden from sight. So the, since we have such a uh, well, poor, cult, uh, poor. Uh, way of, of getting new information introduced into general consciousness. That's, uh, that's what I'm looking to do here a little bit. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's basically uh, the reason I want to do this is because uh, from time immemorial, there's been a place in the community where people can come to get to or come together, congregate, discuss issues of the day. And even though today there's uh, so much, or so many areas of communication going on, uh, you know, is there really any value in anything being presented on a television? It's pretty easy. Uh, yeah, the idea is to provide free venue, people to entertain important information, to communicate with their peers in a non-judgmental, yet critically thinking manner. Uh, wish to enable an environment for intelligent discussion among free thinking individuals. Yeah, I'm not liking reading what I wrote, and I'll just keep. <laughs> so, uh, kind of the structure that I'm, uh, that I'm proposing is uh, a weekly meeting. Uh, I guess this is uh, the monthly uh, convergence here, uh, but the idea developed in my head today talking to Matt and others around here that uh, I was planning on doing it on Tuesdays anyways, and it's at a venue very close by, just across the alley that way at Burns, another metal bar downstairs if anybody knows. Uh, so basically that's, that's what I'm proposing to do. Uh, What's time on Tuesday? Pardon me? What's time on Tuesday? Oh, it'd be like 6 to 8 is what I was thinking, or, or 7 to 9, I don't know, it's all very open to interpretation, of course. Uh, yeah, I'm just winging this. Like, I don't have anybody else, like, uh, like a whole bunch of friends that are going to come down like, and support. So I'm just trying to get, get the idea out there to people who are already involved in these uh, sorts of pursuits and, uh, and well, just learning and building community. And uh, yeah, so uh, another part of the structure, another part of the building is that I want to be keeping uh, recordings of the events. You know, like, uh, I've got the, the videos here posting on YouTube. I think that's great. Uh, I just kind of want, I want to build like a community library where, sorry, I mean it's already going on, so this is all new to me, I'm going to reprocess it again, so yeah. So, okay, another uh, really important aspect of, uh, of this project that I'm working on is this, uh, this hard drive that I've got that is totally full of all sorts of information that is generally not available to the public. And uh, I got like hundreds of thousands of books in PDF form. I'll never be able to read, but on all sorts of topics, uh, I'll get into the topics in a bit. But uh, on all sorts of topics, and uh, just I just want to be able to share this with people who otherwise might not be able to find it. Um, okay, this part's important. Um, polity. Uh, it's not a word that's generally in use, but uh, instead of policy, like policing, I advocate polity, like politeness. So it's uh, it's basically any and all ideas are. Uh, are relevant to the discussion, uh, but they, they need to be in strict adherence to specific guidelines. And the specific guidelines are is, uh, respect in order to uh, avoid just uh, unnecessary knee-jerk emotional reactions that people might have when an idea that they don't like that, that conflicts with their own their particular uh, belief system at the time. If there there should there's there's uh, it's not necessary to react in knee-jerk emotional reactions. <laughs> 
All right, uh, needless to say, behaviors such as circular arguing, ridicule, name calling, shouting, constant interruption, other such negative attitudes, other, other stuff like that. So, yeah. I just thought that was important to, to make it up. Just, uh, uh, yeah, so the methodology that I'm going to be putting into place here is basically a comprehensive and concise method for critical thinking. And, uh, okay, I'll just tell you about some of the, some of the topics that I'm interested in uh, that, that, I've, uh, that I have lots of information about to share with people. Uh, well, first of all, critical thinking now is that's my, my favorite one these days. Uh, lots of information about permaculture. I think that it's a necessary way of, uh, of reorienting re the, the way that we uh, live in our environment and uh, deal with ourselves and uh, and each other. Um, another really important thing I think is going on. I don't know, like exactly what to think about it. Just, and can, just when I bring this up, people think, oh, I'm scared, scared, it's all crazy. But chemtrails, geoengineering, this sort of stuff, it's it's real enough to uh, to to merit research. Um, there's uh, I'm really interested in alternative history, megalithic civilizations, like the all the, the patterns of how these megaliths are all around the world and how they defy our current engineering technology, all that sort of crap. Uh, okay, yeah, pardon my <laughs> um, Another thing I'm really interested in is uh, like individual sovereignty, uh, or interaction with law, uh, what law is. Uh, what's that? The issue of, uh, of Individual sovereignty is uh, is really important to me. Just like uh, you know, what uh, what is legitimate for a police officer to ask from me for, say, burning a plant? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I think that's, that's interesting. <laughs> and, and very important. And basically, they have no authority. You have no contract with them, and they can basically shit in your hand. Um, I think the the climate change debacle is also very worthy of. Uh, 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 investigation. I mean, I'm, I'm not decided one way or the other, but I know that there's a lot of fraudulent bullshit going on, and it's totally unnecessary. All we need to do is well, apply, uh, apply critical thinking, scientific methodology, etc., etc. Uh, okay, I got all sorts of other crap here. I'll just run through them. Uh, there's an electric universe paradigm, I think, that explains celestial mechanics a lot better than uh, the general science. Of it. Um, cancer is a big one. I've, I've come across at least seven uh, cures for cancer that seem pretty legitimate to my mind. And even just the other day, I was watching a, a video called The Sacred Science, where it's basically uh, a guy down in the Amazon who's trained to be a medicine man, bringing people from the Western world and curing them of all sorts of other shit. So ayahuasca makes eight in my, uh, my repertoire. I believe. And fancy, yeah, the next one is entheogens, the psychedelic drugs. I think they're uh, very interesting in uh, providing a healthy, balanced psyche in this totally sick and crazy world. Yeah, that, that's uh, Okay, now I don't have anything else written for these other ones, so I'll just run through them. I got uh, conspiracy theory, conspiracy fact. I got hemp to save the world. I got aquaponics, so yeah, Kelly, who was talking about. Uh, Carrie? Carrie, right, sorry. Carrie, who was talking about aquaponics before. Um, I built a really small system, but it was in my bedroom, and the lights going on and off, and there was the ebb and flow system, so it was really loud. But, so I have a little bit of experience of designing and, and executing that, I think. Uh, but I would recommend building it in your bedroom. <laughs> uh, sustainable housing, you're also talking about earth ships. I think earth ships are a great idea. We just like impacted earth. Uh, there's even just like filling up bags with sand and build with that. Like, there's all sorts of ways going about it. Uh, and there's another one, the hollow fractal graphic theory of reality is presented by Nassim Haramein, who I think has basically uh, just given us a, an entirely new physics based on sacred geometry that actually works, whereas our physics is pretty shitty these days. Uh, and then uh, sacred geometry, cryptozoology, extraterrestrial UFO, war on drugs, spirituality, secret society, ethical theory, political theory, mythology, interspecies communication, mystery schools, cryptic programming, astral projection, alternative, uh, okay, uh, lots of stuff that I'm interested in. Uh, <laughs> and let's go back. Alright, so that's, that's the. Uh, how am I like, going too long? Is this alright? Keep going. Okay, nice. Keep going. I'm going through this critical thinking stuff. So. Uh, yeah, critical thinking. Simplicity rules. Occam's razor always applies. It's uh, the, the idea of parsimony, where basically you can just eliminate all the unnecessary chaff. Is yeah, what uh, you don't. Among competing hypotheses, you need only select the one with the fewest assumptions. So we need a way to recognize what the, the difference between assumptions, which typically falls in the category of belief. Uh, we need to be able to differentiate between uh, assumptions and what is. Uh, more palatably real, like something that is visceral to us that we can, you know, put our hands in, or you know, like, like dirt. Okay, never mind. Uh, okay, so here we start with the Pythagorean triangle, which is a very 
simple sort of thing. And uh, right here we have five senses, uh, and that is our. But, uh, so five senses is uh, what we have to interpret the data of experience. And then the, the, the trivium and the quadrivium, quadrivium put together comprise the seven medieval liberal arts. And uh, this is basically what was taught to people in order so that they might uh, honestly and truthfully engage their experience in life. So the trivium shows how mind works and the quadrivium shows how matter works. This is the trivium right here, and it's a three-part system. And you have to start off uh, here with the grammar first. Grammar is who, what, where, and when. It's the, the, the factual measures of what we have to work with. Next, we have logic, which explains why these different uh, who, what, where, when, uh, what, why these things fit together. So you, you start with your grammar, and you figure out why these things all make the connection. And then you get down to rhetoric, which is the capacity to communicate you know, to yourself first in a coherent way, and then next communicate it with, uh, with other people. And it's, uh, it's a constantly uh, uh, self-evolving fractal pattern, because if you can see that it's a tetrahedron, which is the uh, most basic form of the platonic solid, uh, or platonic solids, uh, the most perfect shape in all nature and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I don't have, a, don't have a, anything to describe the, or a picture to describe the quadrivium, but basically the quadrivium having four parts um, starts with math, next is music, followed by geometry, and then astronomy. And math is number, music is number and time, geometry is number and space, and astronomy is number and time and space. So that's basically all that we have to apply, or that's, that's where we're going to get all of the data for us to process in our, uh, or to uh, receive through our grammar, process in the logic, and then transmit through our rhetoric. Uh, Quadrivium. Yeah, okay. So when considering uh, constructing a paradigm or a worldview, uh, for instance, uh, a, a worldview that incorporates critical thinking uh, contrasted with a worldview that is based on the current education system. Uh, which do you think is, uh, is going to be uh, more healthy and, uh, and, and approach these critical times that we actually live in? Um, I've just got a couple of these diagrams that I find are very invaluable for me in uh, assessing uh, these critical pinpoints. Okay, so this is the pyramid of argumentation and this is uh, this, this is the good way to do things and this is the not, not so good way to do things. So, uh, if you're arguing with somebody, if you explicitly refute the central point uh, by, by giving them the evidence and all this other sort of stuff, so it just goes down here. But this is just really funny down here. So, uh, but that, but that's, generally, that's generally the level of communication that we have. Even if you watch like a, like a CNN show or whatever, they just call each other names. Or, uh, that's okay. Uh, I, really, I really like this one. It might be hard to read, but uh, it just starts out and says, can you envision anything that will change your mind on this topic? If it says yes, it says, uh, if one of your arguments is shown to be faulty, will you stop using that argument with everyone? Uh, the flowchart says, yes. Are you prepared to abide by basic principles of reason in discussing, discussing this topic? He says, okay, now, this is a discussion. Here's, here's, here are the rules. The rules are to not introduce new arguments while another argument, argument has yet to be resolved. Do not move on to another argument if it is shown that a fact you have relied upon is inaccurate. Provide evidence for your position or arguments. Do not argue that you do not need evidence. If you breach any of these, yes. You cheated, so you can fuck off, basically. Next one, congratulations, <laughs> we're having an experience. Or, uh, we're, we're having a uh, rational human being exchanging ideas. Uh, I just, I really like this, and uh, I just think even, uh, like I was saying earlier, uh, for a police officer to come and say that you can't be burning that plant, you just say, thank you for requesting to have a discussion with me about this topic. Discussions are a dialogue between people in which participants are willing to alter their position. Now that, I think, right there is the most important part of dialogical persuasion. That's Hancock's right there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it, depends, uh, it depends on uh, well, how, how well it really is. Uh, this, this is uh, just an interesting thing. Uh, good way to think about stuff. Okay, I'm just going to end it here. Basically, everything leads back to sacred geometry for me. Uh, uh, this is the pattern of how, or the, in considering Occam's razor, is the, the most uh, coherent and uh, and concise pattern to explain uh, all this uh, experience of reality that we have. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>